Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always, and today for the second video of the day, we're taking a look at using the Lightning Targeting Pod on the F-A-18C Hornet in conjunction with the IR-guided variant of the AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground missile available for the F-A-18C Hornet. Now, using the Lightning Pod in conjunction with an IR Mav gives you a lot of advantages when it comes to attacking defended ground targets that simply using the integrated IR sensor within the Maverick itself simply does not allow you to use. Now, you'll be able to break out targets from a lot farther distance and allow yourself to have more standoff distance from the target as well as be able to uh, identify and designate targets while flying at different aspects away from perpendicular to and anything in between from the target itself. Now if you've watched my SAM missile evasion video or my air to ground tactics fundamentals video you'll know that flying with your nose on pointed at the target is very very bad in terms of very very bad for your health when it comes to attacking a defended target whether in real life or in DCS world here. And so that's why there are such things as roll-in maneuvers as well as why we fly the jet in certain ways when we are being engaged by a SAM system. And so using the targeting pod and being able to look at a target while flying perpendicular to it or even away from it and be able to designate and find targets for your AGM-65F IR guided Maverick will really, really help you when it comes to increasing both your lethality on the battlefield as well as increasing your survivability when you're flying over defended territory. So let's go ahead and hop in the cockpit and get started. Alrighty guys, here we are back in the office of the F-A-18C Hornet, and today we're going to take a look at using AGM-65F IR guided Mavericks in conjunction with the Lightning Targeting Pod. Now it is a pretty simple procedure once you get it, get it down and practice it a couple times, and just like releasing AGM-65E LMAVs, it does require a bit of uh, switching back and forth using the sensor select switch uh, between the left and right hand DDIs. So let's go ahead and throw her into air to ground mode and get started here. We'll select our uh, AGM-65Fs on our left hand side, as well as we'll go to our FLIR page on our right hand side DDI. And we'll go ahead and use sensor select to the right to put our TDC uh, and HOTAS controls onto our right hand DDI, denoted by that diamond in the top right of course. And we'll go ahead and throw her into FLIR mode as well. Like I said in the previous video, I don't like using CCT CCD TV camera on the lightning pod in the F-18 because this green scale doesn't let you see anything anyway with CCD uh, uh, on the lightning targeting pod in the F-18C. Next, we'll go ahead and come down here. We'll get rid of the stick to make it a little easier. We'll come down here and uh, we'll start slewing the pod on down and we'll put it right on top of our waypoint one and we'll zoom it on in. And of course, we're looking for a airfield and that looks like a runway out here. And there's our target area with a couple vehicles on the ramp right there. And for this first shot, we'll go ahead and go after this uh, first vehicle here. Now, next thing we'll go ahead and do is we will press depress on the TDC to set a target point. Now, this also allows us to see where that target is out there on the HUD, which is incredibly important for allowing you to be able to find that target and get your nose on it, of course. Next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and kick off the autopilot. And we'll go ahead and bring on up our LMAV page. Now, when I'm using AGM-65Fs, I like to zoom in the FOV on every single missile by pressing the step button. And as we see, we, we step through the different stations now, they are all FOV zoomed in. Now, uh, for me, that uh, allows myself to uh, lock on a target a lot, lot easier. Um, and it allows you to see what it's looking at a lot, lot easier uh, as you fire a missile off and the next camera pops up for you. So next thing we need to do is we just simply need to bring the sensor select switch over to the left hand DDI, which on the first missile automatically uncages that missile and it slaves that missile's seeker head down to that selected target point that we set with our lightning targeting pod down here. And now all you need to do is simply just fly down towards the target until you get in range and you see that X over the MAV symbol, the MAV F symbol, uh, go away and you're ready to fire and rifle off that missile. So we'll go ahead and put a little slightly nose down and we'll go ahead and throw her into full mill 
like I said, same thing with those AGM 65Es. The higher your airspeed, the better chance you're going to give your Maverick of hitting that target due to the fact that uh, that missile will be going a lot faster at, the, at its time of firing. And so uh, that just gives the missile a lot more energy to maneuver with, say if the target is m moving or it can fight a crosswind, things like that that just give your missile a lot better chance of hitting. So we'll go ahead and bring the nose down a little bit more. We'll pull the power back a little bit just so that we don't get a little too fast. Now keep in mind here that HM-65Fs are mostly used in the United States inventory to attack and destroy shipping, uh, but because the uh, targeting pod, the lightning targeting pod here in the F-A-18 does not like to point track moving ships, we're going to go ahead and do this demonstration against stationary vehicles. And why don't we pause it here, and if you zoom in on this DDI really, really close, we can actually see that tank, that armored vehicle that we have inside of our crosshair on our targeting pod, actually looks like it's a BMP, not a tank, um, is inside the crosshair of our Maverick there. Now, it will, in fact, get into range, and it will um, lock onto it. In fact, as we see here, Right when we paused it, it did actually lock onto that. As we see, the Mav F symbol here on the HUD is now no longer X'd out, which means that we could actually rifle at any time. However, we still have 13 seconds till we're completely and totally in range, and we want to give that missile uh, as best of a chance as we possibly can, so we're going to wait a few more seconds to allow ourselves to get fully in range. And we can kind of see this flashing down here in the middle of the crosshair. That also denotes that it is locked. And we're now in range, so we'll go ahead and rifle. Now another kind of nice thing that using lightning pod in conjunction with AGM-65Fs is you get immediate BDA on the target. You're not going to be guessing as to whether or not you hit that target based on uh, different you know, ideas of where that explosion happened and the resulting fire is down on the ground you're going to get an immediate satisfaction of seeing that target explode. And we can see it's getting closer and closer. And Shack, that is one less BMP to worry about. And we can see that guy is Gonzo. Now, the next major, major advantage that using a lightning pod in conjunction with IR Guided Mavericks is the simple fact that you can look and lock and look for targets as you are flying uh, away from a target or perpendicular to a target. Um, and that it gives you a major, major advantage in terms of survivability. If you guys have seen my video on evading SAMs, you guys will know that you never ever want to point your nose directly onto a defended target. Uh, or you want to do that for as little amount of time as possible. This is true even if you watch my air to ground fundamentals video. You can see that the roll in maneuver is so that you are not flying directly at nose onto a defended target for extended periods. That you want to fly offset to the target, roll into that target, drop your munitions, and then fly away as you egress away from that target. And this allows you to do that a lot better. When you aren't using a targeting pod in conjunction with these AGM-65Fs, a lot of times you are flying with your nose onto that target for extended periods, and on top of that, your head's down in the cockpit trying to line up a shot with that AGM-65, which can certainly, certainly be hazardous to your health, and is one of the reasons why a-10 pilots and A-10s themselves had a very, very, very short life expectancy back in the Cold War because their entire reason and for existing was simply to take out as many T-72s and T-55s as possible coming through the Fulda Gap in case the Soviets did decide to invade Western Europe. And so they would simply be, you know, launching as many Mavericks as they could and, you know, keeping their head down the cockpit as they launched those guys as well as conducting close in range close in gun runs onto those armored vehicles, which is not necessarily good for your health. So to kind of demonstrate this, we've already got a target lined up as we're flying away from it, of all things. So we'll go ahead and roll on back in.
we'll zoom the pod back in. Looks like we got a nice juicy T72 lined up. And we'll hit TDC Depress to mark that as a target. We've already got our seeker head of our next AGM-65F already lined up on that target. And as we zoom in, we can see that T-72 under the crosshairs of that Maverick, ready to go. And it is currently locked onto that tank. And we're waiting until we get into range, about 10 seconds to go here. TTMR is, of course, time to max range, in case you guys were wondering. And there we go. We are currently in range, so rifle number two. And we're going to go ahead and come off the left-hand side of the target. Or, sorry, the right-hand side of the target. So that way we can get a good view of that T-72 explode and get that instantaneous BDA that we've been looking for. zoom out the view a little bit on the targeting pod so we can have a better view of that impeding explosion. It is a little bit agonizing because when you use Mavericks in conjunction with the lightning targeting pod, and there's a shack for us, you have no time to impact countdown like you do when you drop an LGB or you uh, drop a JDAM. There is no way to say, okay, it's coming down in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So it can be a little bit disconcerting in that way. So we'll go ahead and come back out here and we're pal parallel the target a little bit. See if we can get our target targeting pod unmasked so we can search for our next target. As we are flying away from that target, which is certainly good in terms of our survivability. And there's our next target ready to go. Also, of course, helps out with acquiring targets because you can zoom in and see and break out different types of targets. Like we could break out that our first target was a BMP, our second target was a T-72. All these kinds of things that you really cannot do when you're using simply the uh, view of the AGM-65F by itself. And of course, the sunset here in DCS 2.56 in all of its beautiful glory. And we'll go ahead and come on around. Now this next Maverick is caged, so as we come down to the target here, we're going to go ahead and hit uncage. So just a quick uh, pause here because we don't have much time. We're, I had to bring the sensor select switch from the right hand DDI over to the left hand DDI denoted by this diamond in the top right, then hit on the uncage button to then uncage that Maverick and allow its seeker head to be slaved to the target point that we set on the lightning pod by depressing TDC depress. Now that's a lot of alphabet suit and it sounds very, very complicated, but it's very, very important that we bring that sensor select switch over to the left hand DDI because if we didn't and we had hit the uncage button, our targeting pod would have just flown off back into infinity, uh, re-caging back up onto our HUD and onto our uh, velocity vector up here on the HUD. So that would have been no good. We just have to really, really make sure that we have the controls assigned to the correct DDI to, correct, to uh, control the correct system that we want to control. So it's already locked. Our Mav F is unexed on our HUD. We're in range and there we go. There goes another rifle. Coming off to the right hand side here. It of course allows you to have a lot more standoff range with a missile that is not necessarily known for its standoff range. Um, being able to identify that target and have it slaved to that point and just when it sees just the faintest bit of a uh, heat discrepancy 
between the background and the object that you have selected as your target point via the lightning targeting pod, we can see, and it locks on right there, and you're able to fire it from its maximum range, which you wouldn't be able to do very, very easily if you were using a different uh, system where you're just using the sensor on the AGM-65F by itself. I know that there was a funny comment about my getting 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock mixed up in a previous video, but I tend to do that in real airplanes too, so I wouldn't uh, make too big of a deal out of that. Usually the people I'm flying with usually get it. <laughs> But we want to minimize that as much as possible, of course. Just a gorgeous sunset over the Zagros Mountains of Iran. If you're more interested in Iran and its geography, which I certainly am because it's a very interesting uh, country historically, uh, I really, really recommend checking out uh, a Warren Miller segment on skiing in the Zagros Mountains. It's, uh, it came out a few years ago now, and it was a very, very interesting piece. Uh, hella skiing out of uh, Mi-8 hip helicopters in the in the Zagros Mountains. Pretty, pretty interesting stuff. It would have been cool to have a winter theme for the Persian Gulf map with snow on those mountains. All right, we're coming back around here, and we're about to unmask our pod flying perpendicular to our target here, completely and totally perpendicular, and still be able to break out that target, which is just a massive, massive advantage for you and your strike fighter when engaging a defended target like this airfield here. If, say, if someone had fired a SAM up from this target uh, right here, you would be in a lot, lot better shape to evade that SAM uh, than if you were nose on with your head absolutely buried in the cockpit trying to line up a tank in your AGM-65F uh, sensor. So just keep that in mind and I really really recommend anytime you bring some AGM-65Fs to the fight definitely bring yourself a lightning pod. It's really really going to help you in terms of your survivability and your lethality on the battlefield. So I'll just plug the burners just a little bit there. Give us a little bit of extra boost as we bring ourselves down and around back onto this little airfield. All right, we're gonna go have sensor select to the left and uncage button to uncage that Maverick. If we zoom in here, you can see that tank or that M113 actually, that APC underneath the crosshair there. Should be locking her up pretty quick here. And it is locked up. We're waiting for that time to maximum range countdown. And rifle. Wow, look at how red that smoke is here in the uh, sunset. <laughs> Pretty darn cool if you ask me. Sensor select to the right again, so that way we can zoom out on the targeting pod and wait for the impact of that Maverick. Now, Mavericks are not the fastest missiles in the world, and you will find yourself outflying your own missile quite often with an AGM-65. It's just uh, part of using this missile. It's uh, not something that we can really help. And there is the fourth and final shack. We are currently Winchester and ready to head home. Correction, we are actually, we are currently shotgun and ready to head home. This is our point at which we are, have reached a weapon state at which we are ready to egress from the target area, but not completely relegated to just guns. Alrighty guys, so 
like I said just a few seconds ago, definitely, definitely, definitely use a lightning pod in conjunction with your AGM 65 Fs. It'll make your life a lot, lot easier. You'll find yourself surviving engagements far more especially when you're bombing a defended target or attacking a defended target, it's really, really going to help you uh, keep from getting shot down as well as increase your lethality against those ground targets you're currently engaging. So I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, definitely give us a like and a subscribe and uh, enjoy this awesome sim. Thanks a lot, guys.